What was Winterfield Day like? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So first things first in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to everyone that participated in both the Winlink Field Day Challenge and the APRS Challenge. Uh, Winlink seemed to be a little bit more popular as opposed to APRS, but I was able to make quite a few contacts using both of those methods. Now I will leave a link down in the description below for the full written after action report if you want to dive uh, a little deeper into what we're discussing here today. Primarily, my objective for this winter field day was to gather as much data over RF as I possibly could and disseminate that information in various ways, primarily utilizing the Raspberry Pi display that I built. And I ended up running a total of three stations, more or less, if you count the Raspberry Pi display as a station, even though there wasn't a radio connected to it. My primary operating position this year utilized the ICOM 705 and the Evolve laptop. This gave me the capability of doing Winlink over HF or two meters, which I never did use. It also gave me the ability to do JSA call, and I even operated and made a few voice contacts utilizing the primary station. In addition to that primary station, I also ran an APRS Digipeter. Uh, and that performed flawlessly just like it did last summer field day. However, there are a few things that I've come up with that we'll get to uh, when we start talking about battery and solar that could be improved upon as far as the Digipeter is concerned. And then in addition to both of those, I also operated the Pi Display, which was set up on the outside of the RV on a little table that we have that attaches to the outside. Now, speaking of the Pi Display, I really didn't know what to expect from that. I knew kind of what I wanted to put out there, what information I wanted to put on it. Uh, and I did have it preloaded with a few slides, what I call the Did You Know series. So, did you know we can send email from our radios? Or did you know we can send text messages from our radios? But other than that, I really didn't know what to expect. I did go ahead and load up a current weather report uh, as soon as we got on site that morning and I was able to pull that down using Winlink. Now that's one thing uh, that I refuse to do for field day or winter field day is I never utilize the internet uh, to pull any information, uh, whether that's uh, the reverse beacon network or any kind of spotting page or even a weather report. I wanna pull everything that I can over RF. But I really wasn't uh, certain what to expect from the Pi display. But what I found is it captured people's attention as they walked by. And I could see people from my operating position inside. I, I could watch them as they stood there looking at that information scrolling across the screen. And I had a lot of comments on the Pi display about how that could be valuable for different things in addition to uh, fill day and winter fill day. And that is something I definitely plan to utilize again for summer fill day later this year. Now let's talk about failures of which I had two. First, one of the jumpers that was in one of my bags, I grabbed out and connected up. Uh, that was to the 705 system. And as soon as I keyed the radio, SWR was off the charts, uh, infinitely high. I wasn't quite certain what was going on, a little bit of investigating, uh, and I figured out that I had a bad piece of coax. That was easily remedied by grabbing a spare cable that I had in the bag. But something you should always do is double check your coax prior to the event. The only other little minor failure that I had was when I went to put up the uh, in-fed half-wave antenna at the very beginning. I had to park in a different location than I typically do on our field day site, and I didn't have quite enough cordage to reach the tree when I was going to tie off the far end of the antenna. 
thanks to Marvin, W0MET, he loaned me a little bit of spare cordage and I was able to fix that problem as well. That is on my notes is to add some spare cordage both to the RV storage compartment and to my radio kits. Now let's talk for a quick second about the solar and the battery and I do have some notes here on my phone to make sure I don't miss anything. A big experiment that I wanted to do during this winter field day outing was I wanted to see how the 100 amp hour battery in the RV would perform on its own. Now I did carry the generator with me as a backup but I never utilized it for anything. Uh, and it was interesting because I got to kind of looking around and studying how much various components inside the RV uh, consumed as far as amperage was concerned. So for instance, the TV inside the RV pulls about two amps. Well, I was utilizing that for the display of the APRS DigiPeter. And after the sun went down, I ended up actually shutting the display down. I left the DigiPeter running and could access it uh, through VNC for my primary workstation, but I did shut uh, the display down because if you take uh, just eight hours uh, running that TV at two amps per hour, then you're consuming a total of 16 amp hours from your battery over that eight hour period. So I did have to do some things to uh, start reducing power consumption after the sun went down. Now during the day, well, let's back up. Early on Saturday morning after I connected all of the radio equipment, had everything up and online, uh, the radio equipment and the uh, things inside the RV, so the refrigerator, if it was running, uh, the lights in the RV, there was a fan uh, that was circulating at some point during the day. All of that was... Uh, consuming about two amps off of the battery in addition to what my uh, 290 watts of solar on the roof were able to produce. Now part of that was the low angle of the sun early in the morning. Now I had just purchased a extra 60 watt solar panel and I wound up connecting that to the solar on the side port on the RV. I was able to angle that 60 watt panel uh, more direct towards the sun with that low angle and I got that uh, consumption eliminated and was actually producing about 1.5 uh, amps above and beyond what I was consuming with the RV. So overall I'm really really pleased uh, with the way that battery held up. Uh, it seemed to do everything that I needed to do. Uh, the 290 watts on the roof was probably plenty once the sun got up but already had the 60 watt panel out there so I just left it. Late in the afternoon on Saturday we started seeing clouds rolling in and I kind of checked the batteries at that point and the batteries were still at 100%. So by the, fine, uh, by the time darkness finally rolled in, then I started looking at ways to conserve power because I, I was kind of taking notes of how much I was using at any given time and I could see that I would be close uh, possibly on the battery consumption running everything wide open. Now a couple of, uh, a couple of the systems, the APRS DigiPeter and the Pi Display were both connected to 110 circuits on the RV. That required me to run the inverter, and we all know that inverters are not the most efficient things in the world. So going forward, I'm going to look to possibly uh, reducing the DigiPeter down to a Pi Zero. The Pi Zero pulls about half the power that a Pi 4 will pull, which is what I used this year. And I may even be able to get that Pi Display reduced down to a Pi Zero as well. But in any case, I want to get those both running on a 12 volt source and eliminate the need for the inverter in the RV. I think that would have saved me uh, a little bit of consumption as I was going through fill day. One thing with the battery and the solar that I didn't think of actually until I was getting ready to leave uh, on Sunday was I needed to have enough battery capacity left to be able to pull the slide in on the RV and operate the electric tongue jack. Otherwise, I would have had to have gotten the generator out and fired it up to provide power to do both of those things. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't run the battery completely flat. In fact, uh, come Sunday when we broke down, 
I had about 40% or 40 amp hours left in that battery. So I consumed around uh, 60 amp hours total from uh, dark on Saturday until we left on Sunday. Now, Sunday morning, the weather was pretty nasty. A rainstorm had moved in overnight and that carried over into Sunday morning. Um, it finally, the rain kind of stopped around 10 a.m. Uh, and then we just had intermittent showers the rest of the day. But uh, definitely need to make sure I've got enough battery capacity left to pull in that slide and operate the tongue jack when it's time to go home. Now I spoke about the generator a minute ago. I did have the generator in the back of the Jeep just as a backup power source, but I never utilized it. Uh, since I didn't need the air conditioning unit, there was really no need to run the generator. The only reason I run the generator uh, at Summerfield Day is just so we can have the comfort of the AC during the hot June days here in Tennessee. As far as the radio gear goes, I am still ecstatic about moving to that modular go bag setup that I created and did a video on probably six months ago or so at this point. That has really proven to be a winning concept as far as the way I like to operate radio. Uh, sort of like I mentioned in that video, no two outings are the same. Even from one winter field day to the next winter field day, I want to change equipment up and run various experiments. So having that modular system and starting to break things apart into different uh, compartments has really helped me when it comes to getting ready for one of these events. I don't have to go robbing out of one kit to put stuff into another kit. I can simply grab the components from each category that I need and load them into the appropriate bag that I plan to carry with me for that particular outing. So what will I change between now and summer field day? Well, I definitely want to get both the Pi Display and the DigiPeter systems running on 12 volts also want to see if I can reduce their power consumption as much as possible. Now, I will be running the generator for summer field day, so that will change things a little bit, but I still want to get the uh, power consumption reduced as much as possible and definitely do not want to be using the inverter uh, at any events going forward. I'm fairly happy with the way uh, everything turned out. I'm pleased with uh, both of the challenges, the Winlink and the APRS challenge. I'll certainly continue the Winlink challenge for Summer Field Day. So if you missed out on this one, you'll have another opportunity to participate come Summer Field Day. I'm probably not going to do the APRS challenge again. I have an idea in mind for something else that we might be able to do during Summer Field Day and kind of change things up a bit. I think I'm going to hang on to the APRS idea for each Winter Field Day and do something a little bit different for Summer Field Day. But I'm curious, what did you guys do for Winter Field Day? What lessons did you learn and what failures did you run into? The successes, well, those kind of get boring after a little while. Uh, making a few contacts is nothing unique on Winter Field Day or Summer Field Day as far as that goes. I like to use these opportunities to experiment and to fail because with each failure, I learn a little bit more about different things inside this hobby. So leave me a comment down below and let me know what your experience was like for Winter Fill Day. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.